So this week, we received the 911 calls when Benjamin Anderson's body was found on fire in the Arizona desert. He went missing on New Year's Eve, and this is now a high-profile homicide case. The man who found his body and called 911 took our Brianna Whitney back to the area off I-17 and Table Mesa Road to give us an exclusive look into what he saw that day. He asked us not to use his name or show his face. It's the middle of the desert as remote as you can get. Have you been back here since? No, uh, no. It was emotional, yeah. On New Year's Eve, this man was trying to find an area for target practice when he saw something that caught his attention. I saw smoke coming out of the uh, that cliff here. And when I got to here, I saw like a body laying on the ground. He immediately called 911. 911, where is the address to your emergency? Um. Let me see. Uh, I'm now in the desert of the 17 on uh, Mesa Table. He says the body was laying right there on the rock. It was face down with no clothes on, and he says the way the left leg was positioned made everything really confusing. I'm not sure if it's a body or mannequin, but it looks like a body to me. What made you think it was a mannequin? It just the way it was like the leg sitting, uh, standing, and uh, it just the way it was like on the floor. What he didn't know at the time was that was the burning body of missing Phoenix man Benjamin Anderson, where miles and miles away, family and friends were searching for him. Benjamin mysteriously went missing that New Year's Eve morning, and eventually his friends found Ben's car in a Phoenix hotel parking garage with what they say were three unknown people inside driving the car. Hours after that, his friends found the car in a school parking lot completely burned. This man says right away he noticed something about the fire in the desert. It was the face, like the head, all the way to the shirt, that's the, to the shoulders where the fire was. So only the top part of his body was on fire? At yes, point? it was like the head to the shoulders, like right here, that, that's where the, the fire was. He says next to the body was a smaller fire, which he thought was possibly a shoe or piece of clothing, but couldn't make out exactly what it was. He doesn't remember seeing blood or anything else for that matter. And that's the eeriest part. Do you think you may have passed driving the person that did it? Yeah. No, we, I didn't see nothing. No cars, no cars, nothing around here. This but, is wild. Yeah, it's it's very eerie. Uh, let's talk about the cliff. How high was that cliff? Yeah, so we were all three looking today, me, my photographer, mm -hmm. and him, and we think it was about a 25-foot drop. And in the police report, the officers say they believe he was either pushed off the cliff mm -hmm. or he fell down, but they don't know if he was alive or dead before mm -hmm. he fell off or, or was pushed off that cliff. Mm -hmm. They're still investigating. Mm -hmm. They haven't made any arrests, so there's just so much mm -hmm. mystery to this. I mean, but the friends were all over yes. trying to find him. Outside of uh, the, the story and the information you got today. What was your feeling about that area? I mean, it's so desolate. It and you do see a lot of the just shell case scenes and things. Yeah. You know, there's target practice out there. Right. But I mean, I said to our photographer, Chris, saying it really feels like we're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Nothing is so seen or heard out happen. here. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it was it was odd being yeah. there. You wanted out of there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you, Brianna. Thank you.